a very good afternoon and a warm welcome to our esteemed panelists and all the fantastic participants for the discussion on community physiotherapy in india uh, we are very honored to have with us our speakers who are very well renowned and have attributed to the domain of community based rehabilitation and physiotherapy we have with us dr vimal telang ma'am dr chitranjan mishra sir dr pavitra rajan ma'am and dr nita ves ma'am uh, i dr apurva shempi on behalf of the organizing committee of scientifica 2021 welcome our honorable panelists and proceed further for this session the topic that we have taken is on community physiotherapy in india now uh we need to talk on this particular domain but what triggers this particular topic uh who are we as community physiotherapists and how do we contribute to the uh, healthcare or betterment of the society are we well established as a profession and as professionals and do we also get the same due recognition uh, as we all deserve now we all know that india is a developing nation and is fighting with its own burden of disability uh, also the associated cost with the disability that we face in our country are are very huge the government and the private sector is quite involved in the diagnosis and treatment process but then seldom attention is given for prevention of problems as physiotherapist we are widely involved as partners in healthcare but again we are uh, we are not uh, we, rather we are a seldom part of the rehab process for persons with disabilities so what do we really do in community physiotherapy now as we said earlier indian community is in need of cost effective uh, prevention strategies and uh, there are health burdens or health problems and burdens of disability associated with it physiotherapy is a profession that ensures better and faster recovery of the people where community physiotherapy is the specialization of the physiotherapy that ensures better and faster recovery of communities unfortunately community physiotherapy is not a sought out spe after specialization in india and physiotherapists tend to serve in institutes rather than at community level and as a result of this uh, the healthcare is stagnated to some domain there are researches that have shown that community physiotherapists have uh, who have adequate motivation knowledge and skill are not so sufficient and identification of interest of our field our community physiotherapist for provision of adequate resources uh, is really the prioritization of our profession so we as community physiotherapists have immense knowledge or potential to treat public health conditions improving the awareness and interest of physiotherapist and the general population is the key for us is key for success of this community physiotherapy domain so where all do we as community physiotherapist have have a role to play we are involved in preventing deformity and disability health promotion and disease prevention we are instigators of cbr services we are involved in promotion of self care providers of direct care consultancy advice support to healthcare personals we are essentially team leaders and managers we are involved with local ngos involved in curative education training transfer domains and very important is we are also advocates of the persons with disabilities so essentially speaking community physiotherapists are master trainers we are the caregivers of the society and our role is multi is in multitude of domains from conception of life to the graceful old uh, old age we are involved from promoting of health to restoration of the function and hence when we talk together we are a team we make the client functional productive and accepted part of the society because just survival is not enough with this preamble i would like to introduce our first panelist for today dr vimal telang ma'am dr vimal telang is former head of department of physiotherapy at all india institute of physical medicine and rehab she is a post graduate teacher and guide under muhs and has her fellowship in undp in indonesia and who by regional training in sri lanka ma'am has worked with various projects with the who and dst under government of india and has numerous publications in peer reviewed journals 
and also in WHO training manual. She is a proud recipient of the Kanchan Kosher Scholarship and the best paper at SIPCON and IAP. She is also a proud recipient of the IAP Oration Award. So with this, may I request Dr. Vimal Telang, ma'am, to talk on her topic of burden of disability in India. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Apurva. A uh, very good morning, a good afternoon, and good evening to all the participants of this conference. I understand the participants are there from all over the globe. So, I and I wish Scientifica very uh, all the best for their conference proceedings. I thank Scientifica, Scientifica 2021 for inviting me to this very August conference and uh, a very important topic on community physiotherapy, which has been in, included in their panel discussion. I think that's a great highlight that they have done. Now the topic that which I am speaking on, on the burden of disability in India. Now we are working with disability. We are doing so much of ICF and we understand that disability is so complex, is so dynamic in nature, it's multidimensional aspects, and at the same time, most contested. So when we are talking from ICF point of view, we are talking of the burden of disease as a health condition. So we are talking of the health condition in terms of the diagnosis. And then along with the health condition comes the burden of impairment. It's not just the health condition. It's a lot of the burden of impairment, the burden of the dysfunction, the burden of the activity limitation and the participation restriction, which goes on, which multiplies even more. So we can't, so actually the burden of disease is much more for us as physiotherapists, we should take it as a burden of activity limitation and participation restriction, which we are holding. Now let us understand what do you mean by burden of disease? The burden of disease is the gap between what is the current health status, and what is an ideal situation where everyone lives into old age, free of disease and disability. Now let us, how much is the burden? How much is the burden that we are carrying? And how do we estimate the burden? We should know what is the burden that we are carrying. So we have to, we have to make ourselves ready to carry this burden to, so that the burden is, is, is manageable. Next. Now, if we see the census, census of 2011, now the 2021 census is expected now. So the burden of uh, what they have estimated that the persons of dis with disability, we have 2.68 crores, that is 2.21% of the population. Now, this is a very contested figure by many because of the method in which they have uh, estimated this. All the same. If you see the distribution of the persons with disability is that, uh, next can go further, is that is in the age group of 20 to 25 years and 10 to 19 years. So that is that is a young population is the one with the person with disability and these are the most productive people which will, and we know that disability is a, from a point of view, it, comes into, it affects our GDP, it affects all our, it is. So if our productive population is persons with disability, how much it affects our uh, other developmental issues also. Next. Now, as I said, it is a very contested figure. Now, there is, this is a systemic review, which I found uh, done by S. Ramadas on the prevalence of disability and its association with the sociodemographic factors and quality of life. Now, according to them, then when they have done the assessment of impairment with eight studies, the prevalence was 1.6% to 43.3%. So just see the range in which the impairments were. If they did the activity limitations, the number of studies 13, Prevalence range from 4.8 to 87.5 percent. Right, it is the big range. If they did participation restriction, which is only one study, and that also they did it in persons with more than 65 years age, it was 57 percent. And if they took all the three components of the ICF, then the, which had two studies, 
it ranged from 70.0% and 93.2%. These were the two studies. Now, where is our census of 2.21% and where is this prevalence of 70 and 93? And if you saw the quality of life, the poor quality of life was maximum with 43.1%. So you see the figures itself. So we don't know what burden we are. So how can we brace ourselves? How do we know how much is the burden? Everyone is saying, someone say, so if someone says it is only 1.6%, then we are, our manpower, they will say that the, because all these figures are very important for planning. Planning Commission is going to take all of these figures to see how much is our manpower requirement. Now, on the other hand, we have someone who says 93.2. So what are the what are the cause for the variables among the different groups? Now, see, next, yeah. The variables which occurred across these various studies were the age, because different studies with different age groups. Then again, it depended on the type of survey that they did, the type of scale that they used. That means what are the outcome measures that they used. And it was there was a range of social demographic factors in the type in the terms that some were in rural areas, some were in urban areas, then some were what was the uh, economic status, so all and the accuracy of measurements. This, these are the things which you normally know that what these are so that is why so much of the variation in the prevalence of disability. Next. Now that was within our country. That was within. The India. Now, if you say across the globe, also prevalence of persons with disabilities in Asian and Pacific countries. Now, this was from the DISTAT statistics of November 2006. If you see the on the right, yeah, Australia, New Zealand, the prevalence of disability is almost 20%. These are the these are the much higher standard countries. And when we see on the other hand, where we have Pakistan and Bangladesh have just about less than 1%. Now, these are not figures that we can imagine, not that we, we are biased against any countries, but these are not realistic figures at all. Now, why is this? Again, those same factors, what was the age, what was the type of, uh, type of survey, what were the outcome measures? So there is no standardized measurement system which goes to why the different prevalence of disabilities that we have on record, because these are the records which any planning agency are going to take up to decide how to go about the how to go about to manage this burden. Next, now the one of the criterion to me measure burden that is what is what burden of disability is one of the outcome measures. Now they said disability that is daily that is disability adjusted life years. It is a time based measure to assess the burden of disability. So now it is, as I said, it is what is from healthy, what is what is perfect or what is to what is the actual. So one daily is one lost year of life. Now daily includes YLD, that is years lived with disability, plus years of life loss, that is YLL. So you have, you have now when you look at the years lived with disability, YLD, how do you calculate? It is I multiplied by DW into L. I stands for number of incident cases. DW is the disability weight, and L is the average duration until until remission. Now, very often our statistics, our health statistics, health metrics go on the mortality rates. Nobody talks about the morbidity rates. Remember, is that when we are talking of burden of disability, it is the morbidity which is left behind. We are all looking at to reduce the mortality risk. Yes, that is a prime factor, but we also have to reduce the morbidity and it is where your we as therapists come in. Now, if you see the disability weight, the disability weight range from one, which is the ma maximum, the, the, and zero is that weight is perfect health. Now, if you see the first ever stroke cases, the uh, disability weight is nine, 0 0.92, a spinal cord injury treated patient that is 0.725 and birth trauma all sequelae is 0.372. Remember, even if birth trauma is, it says it is only 0.372. Remember, this these children have a normal what we call as a normal lifespan. So the number of years until remission or death. So the multiplication factor of the L increases many times as against the stroke patient who may be a person, an elderly patient, which even if the first stroke is this point, it, it, it does not mean that one is better than the other. It just shows that one should not go just by the 
disability weight, one has to see also the L factor, that is the average duration under remission. Next. Now, a change in the health metrics, as I said, that we are looking at life expectancy has improved from 1990 to 2016. Also, there is a change in the type of causes of disability. So, we have changed from communicable diseases to non-communicable diseases. Next. Now, you are left with disability by cause. As I said, mortality and what is it? What is left behind? The morbidity. So, if you see the Causes for years lived with the highest, the, the one topmost is iron deficiency anemia, sense organ dysfunction. Now, sense organ dysfunction is where we come low backache and neck pain. How many do we treat daily? Migraine, depressive disorder, skin diseases, musculoskeletal, COPD, diabetes, anxiety. Now, all these osteoarthritis is where we as physios, we as community physios play an extremely important role in in lessening these years of that means we have to Im improve on the disability weight it is here we as therapists we can reduce the disability weight next years life years of life lost again here which are the causes highest is ischemic heart disease stroke copd lower respiratory infection aren't here that we all are involved so we form we as therapists physiotherapists form a very very important role in managing this burden of disease. Next. Now, further, now we, we in ICF, we look at the health condition and how the person we call disability as, a, as how a person functions in the context in which he is. So everything, the function is in a context. So environment when we say context it means the environment environment we are not just talking about the air and the pollution but there are many other things on the environment we know the whole list of gamut of factors in the contextual factors which also includes attitude and the personal uh, personal aspects now if you see now across the globe now dali is attributable to the environment how environment also plays such an important role in the burden of disease if you see australia I'm not saying the figures uh, in words because it's very difficult. You see it is six digits. In Australia, it is six digits. Whereas in America, United States of America, it's eight digits. And when you come to India, it is nine digits, it's as good as our telephone, our mobile number. So that is the extent of the att that is attributable to the environment. Aren't we therapists in very, very much involved in changing the environment. Now, what are these causes of environment? Let us see. Next. See, the DAL is attributable to the environment. You see, there are the, the whole list of uh, factors the, out of which the built environment. Can't we change the built environment? Can't we change the architectural barriers? Can't we make the modifications? Occupational risks. That means all our ergonomic factors. So many we can work in the community, in the factories, in the fields, how these, and we saw that backache was a knee pain, was a very important, was in the burden of disability. It came high ranked in almost third or fourth, if I mistake not. So can't we change these? So this is how we are going to change the burden of disease, by, by intervening at built-in environment, intervening at occupational risk, intervening in preventive and promotive strategies. This is how we are going to. Next. Contextual factors, as I said, uh, we, uh, I was fortunate to work with some of the projects in India. So now when we went, actually we were in the field and not where, very far away from Mumbai, that's in Raigar, that's in Alibag. We saw the what, remember the person with disabilities require public utility services just as we require we require to go to a post office not now but at this this was at a time about in 1995 to 2000 when we still use the post office very frequently now if you see the post office here is on the first floor how much is the accessibility so is it that the is it a problem of the person with disability or is it a occupy is it an environmental factor now the other one slide is where the arrow points out is to the bank now, did you, can you see the staircase, the winding staircase, which is going up 
is it accessible to a person with disability doesn't a person with disability also require bank services of course now change things have changed you can do online but this was the status next so as i said disability is a complete lived experience of non fatal outcome so it is the morbidity we are looking at the morbidity that is left behind people are very happy that the mortality rates have gone down people are very happy road traffic accident mortality but how many spinal cord injuries are we left with how many head injuries are we left with so all these non fatal outcomes are where we as therapists make a big big difference so we are not only it's not merely body level decrements in function for the person with disability and the family what are the needs of the person with disability most common needs they have needs similar to normal able bodied person like you and me they also require to go to school children they also require to go to uh, uh, to access education they require to go to a job they also require to get married they require entertainment they require to go out for sport plus they require what is specific to the in terms of the category of the person with disability so a person with visual impairment will require the aids and appliances as per that or as per the uh, impairment as well as a person with the hearing or speech impairment will require hearing aid etc so it is specific to the category of the disability so but what we forget is that they require their needs are very much are the same similar to normal able bodied person so this, and sometimes even these as i said the public utility services what you and me everybody require so even those are inaccessible to them so when we maintain how do we maintain a functional capacity over the life course now if you see this graph the growth and development in early life how the functional capacity increases in adult life mid adult life and then slowly it tapers down comes down in older age but still and while if when there is a disease process or when there is a impairment or a health condition how what you see on the level line on the yellow line coming down the, it is that the it is going and crossing the disability threshold and when it crosses the disability threshold is that where intervention for rehabilitation and maintaining quality of life comes and we want to bring the cross that threshold come back to normal so if so changes in the environment can change the disability threshold so it is very important that we as we become also responsible in changing the environment and only not looking at the impairments of the person because the disability threshold can be crossed easily next and then when everything is we are not really we are very happy that our burden of disability has reduced our uh, index is are coming here comes our covid covid 19 and we don't just have a pandemic we have a syndemic because it is it is along with its friend of non communicable disorders causing much more havoc so this havoc of the non communicable disease has made the covid a very very strong next so the impact what has the impact how is the impact it has increased the ncd burden so what has happened because of the covid of course we've had lots of mortality and the persons who have the those were survivors who have come out of it and those who have specially all these morbid conditions that so non covid mortality plus morbidity plus the socio economic impact of lockdowns has given a big jolt to our health system and which has again increased our non communicable disease burden and here comes therefore the crucial role of prevention and promotion of health so what the failure of prevention what has happened because of we have failed in prevention our public health system as purva said that a, a public health system really went for a toss because health was never given a priority so our health system got overburdened and we had a unacceptable high loss of life but this is not just to a country this has happened right across the globe because public health was never given an importance and this is where community pt becomes a very much 
uh, a part and parcel of the community uh, public health system. Now, the agenda for sustainable development for all countries, the 2030 goal, it's a UN flagship report on disability and development 2018, therefore highlights the need to significantly increase the availability of high quality, timely and disaggregated data by disability as one of the major requirements to monitor progress made for persons with disability. Now, if you see the world report on disability, the pie chart on the left, is that 15% of the persons with disability are, uh, have a significant difficulty in function. That's a big lot. Next. And therefore, so to bring uh, uniformity in data, the UN flagship program has suggested to all countries and for which India is also a signatory, the, that we should all follow the Washington Group ILO Labor Force Survey Disability Module. It is available on the net, you can get, get it, on which, uh, uh, which you have various five sections. The section one is of disability identification, section two is barriers to employment, section three is accommodation necessary for employment. So they are also looking all the environment and the contextual factors. So they are looking at disability as with relation to not just the health condition of impairment, so they are under the under the umbrella term of uh, impairments, activity limitation, and participation restriction. So that if we have uniform data right across the countries, then planning and policy formulation would be better, and also monitoring would be better. So how do we manage? So as I said, right from the burden of disability, we become part and parcel of holding the burden of adding to the burden as well as reducing the burden. So we have to see the assessment of the health condition vis-a-vis -vis the expressed needs of the person with disability. When we need expressed needs, we are talking of the participation restriction of these persons with disability. This is what they don't come saying that I have an elbow deformity of 30 degrees, make it zero degrees. They come that they cannot eat, that they cannot put on their clothes, that they cannot open the doors or they cannot reach out to objects. So look at the participation restriction. And therefore we have to see the assessment. So what is the assessment? That means the assessed needs as, as we evaluate has to be seen of impairment, Activity has to be seen vis-a-vis -vis the express need, that is the participation restriction. And how should be our therapy outcomes? Our therapy outcomes as well as the outcome measures should be seen with relation to how person goes into participation. So this is how we have seen, only if we look at the, the assessment with relation to the express needs, then can we manage the burden of disability. Next. So, this, so we are express needs becomes the focal point around which we will decide. We will decide in consultation with the patient how we can go about the treatment strategy and change the person from dysfunction to function into participation. Thank you so much for a, for a very patient hearing. Thank you, Apura. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was really very easy. Uh, we now go to our next speaker, Dr. Chittaranjan Mishra, sir. Uh, Dr. Chittaranjan Mishra is a senior physiotherapist at Swami Vivekanan National Institute for Rehabilitation Training and Research. Sir is an office bearer of wheelchair basketball of Odisha. Sir is MPT and certified NDT. He is also a PhD scholar at SRM University in Chennai. He has more than 20 years of experience in the field of rehabilitation, especially in management of spinal cord injury, and is involved in teaching of UG and PG students. Sir also has numerous publications in peer-reviewed index journal. May I request Dr. Chittaranjan Mishra, sir, to take over on his topic? Uh, over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Dr. Apurva Simpi and entire team, Scientifica 2021, for giving me the opportunity uh, to be the part of this 
conference. My topic uh, I have selected, it is related to the spinal cord injury. So that is challenges with person with spinal cord injury for community physiotherapy. Many person with spinal cord injury. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. Many person with spinal cord injury nowadays live longer life, more than two decades, as a result of recent healthcare system. The incidence of SI in India is about 15 to 20 per million, with prevalence rate of exceeding 0.15 million. Following discharge, the common barrier are the lack of home care services, final constraints, accessibility at home and community level, physical inactivities also plays a great role uh, for uh, producing many secondary complications. This factor in combine produces greater impacts in activity, participation, self-satisfaction, and quality of life. Uh, result has shown that the main environment, such as bladder and bowel dysfunction, pain, either nociceptive or neuropathic, spasticity are the, are the three causes uh, it is found mainly in the spinal cord injury. Apart from that, in, in case of low paraplegic, sexual activities is found to be a top priority activity limitations. Similarly, in quadriplegic, uh, walking is the top priority active limitations. Following rehabilitation, when patient with SI return to community, he and her caregivers or attendant may not give same time or same support as he has given in the institutionals. Lack of peer pressure, different environment in the community can lead to activity limitations and participations. So next slide, please. So that leads to uh, activity limitation and participation restrictions. Uh, then it also affect quality of life. So it has been seen that less than 50% of SI return for follow up. Uh, importance of community physiotherapy, which can give the treatment at the community levels. So it has been seen that uh, 10 to 25 percent of SI population return to vocation. Accessibility, uh, including customized wheelchair and mobility, also plays a major challenge in home and community. So that's the reason why uh, the community physiotherapy can play a bigger role uh, to maintain and to improve the physical fitness and to reduce pain, particularly shoulder pain during ambulations and wheelchair populations, wrist pains and hip and knee pain also, uh, it can be managed. Spasticity management also uh, plays a greater role by physiotherapist. And community physiotherapy also see that uh, the accessibility is properly implemented in the home and community levels and educations and advice regarding the sexual and the fertility counseling and referring to the particular uh, area so that they can holistically uh, treat the patient as a whole. So as a result, it improves uh, particularly patient's uh, activity, restrictions, and participations. So coming to the physical fitness, uh, as a physiotherapist, so you will give importance to strength, flexibility, and endurance training and so that you can reduce the comorbidities and you can incorporate different like walking, swimming in the particularly in the community levels and some other activities which can enhance their fitness level. And you can also uh, adapt these activities in such a that particularly leisure activities and sports activities in their daily life so that it can enhance their quality of life. Next slide, please. Uh, as I am talking, the spinal cord injury patients, they get uh, mainly two types of pain. One is nociceptive pain, another is neuropathic pain. So both can be managed at the community level by, by physiotherapist. So portable inst instruments like laser therapy, pains, stretching uh, exercises like stretching exercises, 
my Christian relays play a particular role. So uh, in my experiences, it has been seen that if you can get periscopular stretching, so neuropathy pain can be managed, uh, and uh, particularly it is uh, found to be effective, though it is in the preliminary studies. Spasticity, if it is causing the problem, then you have to reduce the spasticity by giving different sort of exercises, and that is low cost effective exercises like standing, flexible exercises, and you can incorporate ice therapy, TENS, and IFT and for the same things. Next slide, please. Activity level, as you know that particularly physiotherapist assess mainly the impairments and activity levels. So according to the need-based individualized training is required to improve patient's activity levels. So it has been seen that the females are morely uh, concentrated their work in the home. So that's why uh, if patients require any outdoor activities, particularly for female, the cooking and household activities, it is uh, found to be more predominant than the male persons. So it can be vice versa also. Those uh, person is work, uh, particularly female, if you're working outside, they also can be encouraged. Like this picture, you can see. So she is doing both as a household working, as well as uh, she's also working in the office. So that can be, uh, you can use, uh, the you can evaluate the activity level in real situations according to the patient's need that has to be evaluated and uh, it should be encouraged. Next slide, please. So uh, this is the important area. You have to find out the cost-effective assistive devices uh, using these resources available at the locally so that that will be very much cost-effective as well as in the community level. Uh, like uh, parallel bar in this picture is showing the parallel bar. Uh, similarly, other assistive devices can be incorporated so that uh, the cost uh, burden will be reduced. Next slide, please. So, <clears throat> sports activities found to be a very important aspect because that will enhance the self-esteem of the patient. And they will also enhance this uh, uh, community reintegrations into the, the society. Uh, they find more confidence uh, as these patients, I am involved in this uh, organizations. So I found that this, those person is going independently to attend this uh, uh, particularly different sports without any attendant. And they are doing particularly their uh, uh, bladder training programs independently without any assistance. And they are staying also, that is, that creates a, uh, that enhance the uh, particularly self-confidence. Uh, that is the reason why fencing, racket sports, wheelchair basketball, field events like weight lifting, short put, javelin throw, wheelchair marathon, wheelchair kabaddi also can uh, incorporate it. And they should be trained at the community level and promote to attend district, national and international levels event also. The lastly, next slide please. So this is the, uh, if, you, if you can focus the activities and uh, particular um, impairment labels, you can, if you can improve, and your target should be uh, di you are directed towards participations. So that you know, if you can improve your participations uh, or you can reduce the participation restrictions, so as a result, you will find the quality of life and sales satisfaction of the patient will improve. Uh, so you can see in these pictures, so the, how they are happy uh, by attending a particular picnic parties. And another picture is showing how he is also attending the religious uh, activities in their uh, community levels and also arranging the marriage party and they are also feel very happy. So like that, you have to plan the uh, different participation levels and different levels so that uh, patients should uh, get uh, improve uh, in their quality of life. Then uh, particularly to improve first, uh, participations, you have to work on uh, public facility, leisure time activities, social functioning. So lastly, I would like to add one thing that is role model. Patient has to be, uh, has to uh, find so that they can, uh, they can be used for improving the motivations and participation of individual so that patient can see uh, by themselves how that patient works, now how he's doing, so I can do this. So that will be definitely a boost uh, for the uh, recent patients. And uh, lastly, 
about the planning uh, or future planning to strengthen the community physiotherapy. Uh, in my suggestions, if if you have a national research uh, program uh, for prevalence and incidence of disability, can be done by physiotherapy society particularly. So then physiotherapy society can give some definitely can give some pressures by saying that these are the existing uh, disabilities there in our India. Uh, so uh, what should be done? What should be the program should be done? And what should be the protocols? Next is the national level protocols for SI management should also be considered. Uh, also give importance to the cultural and social factor so that everybody should uh, apply a particular programs, it will not, we should not follow the foreign policy uh, always. Similarly, uh, SI patients, more and more SI patients, uh, you have to uh, treat as well as you should to encourage that patients to be as a role model so that all patients can uh, see that how they are performing and their working level also can improve. Lastly, uh, our also focus should find uh, should utilize the uh, resources uh, at the community levels and find effective assistive devices uh, by utilizing multiple disciple approach so that you can uh, give a better life and better uh, satisfaction life to the uh, paraplegic patients. Uh, with this, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. That was really very important domain and thank you for sensitizing us to the uh, locomotor disability and access issues.